All right, well, normally my videos are about cars and motorcycles and stuff out in the shop, but today we got a problem with our flat screen TV and it's causing me problems. Let me show you what it's doing and then we're going to take it apart and see if we can fix it. So it comes on and it actually gets signal and it has audio. Everything's working, but something's wrong with what appears to be the backlight. You can see on the screen there it's flickering. So if I, I don't have it hooked up to the cable right now, but you can see it's flicker, flicker, flicker. And it also makes like a lot of noise through the audio, like a buzzing sound. But we'll take it apart and see what's going on and see if we can fix this old TV. All right, so we got all the screws took out of it. So now we can take the back off. We just raise it up, pull it off there. And so I'm not a electrical engineer or an electronics person. I'm a mechanical engineer, but if it's broke, I'm gonna look at it anyway, just to see, because worst case it's broke and I'll have to throw it away and get another one. But maybe there's something inside of here that I can see or determine what's wrong with it. And uh, then we can try to fix it. So if we look at the boards, like say, I don't know electronics so well, but the good thing about the boards nowadays and Google is that if you don't know what the board is, you can find its part number, Google it, and Google's gonna tell you what the board is. So over here, it looks like we got a power board, and then over here is another board, so I gotta take some covers off. So it must be between this board and this board and a few other boards laying around. So we'll take the cover off that one and look that one up and see what it is, because if it is my backlight, maybe that's my backlight board or an inverter, something like that that drives that, and maybe something's just gone wrong with the inverter. Maybe I gotta replace that board, or maybe there's just a component on it that I can find that's gone bad. So let's get that little cover out there and see what's going on underneath. All right, so to get this off here, it doesn't feel like it wants to come up. It's almost like it's sticky, something sticky holding it. So I'm gonna wiggle on it a little bit, and see if I can't get it. There we go. All right, so it's got a little sticky mat back behind it right here. It's probably a heat sink for those big old circuits right there. So let's get that and stick that back on top of them. I'd say that's some type of conductive material there that keeps those guys cool because they're really warm just from turning it on for a little while, trying to see what it's doing. All right, so we got our part numbers on this board right here and I Googled them and it turns out that this is the uh, inverter board for the backlight and I guess it's for the LCDs as well, but it's the backlight is what it says it's for. So I give odds this thing may be my problem. So now I got it exposed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug things up and I'm going to see when I power it up without the back on it, does it flicker and what does it do? All right, so I got me an insulated screwdriver and I'm just gonna touch that board and just see if anything's going on because now it's not doing it. So it may be something to do with that board and because I took all the screws out, maybe something's contacting again. So we'll see. So let's turn it back off and just verify that this board is actually the backlight. So what I'm gonna do is just unplug it. This is the main harness coming out of the power supply. And so I'm gonna unplug that and then I'm gonna power it up and see if I see the lights come on on the backlight. Yeah, so without that board connected up, it doesn't do anything. So let me connect that back up. Yeah, so that's definitely my lights because you can see them come on here in the background. And so you can see those lights light up. So this is definitely the LCD board. And I can also hear what that humming noise is. It's the power supply. It sounds like it's making a big humming noise. So it must be this board is overloading things. So let's turn it back off and we'll take that board off. And then we're going to see if we can find anything wrong with it. Maybe we just have to replace that board. So let me get that turned back off and get it unplugged. And then we'll take the board back loose. Just have to pick up on it real easy and see if we can't break it free. There we go. Oh, I forgot that little guy. Pull that connector off. 
It's a little tiny ribbon one. And there we go. So there's our board. And as we can see, doesn't look like much going on on that side of the board. This side looks like it's got some big old circuits on it and they get really, really warm. And we got some capacitors and we got some electronics. But if you notice, first thing I noticed when I took it off, something on this board has gotten hot because look at that. You can see the soot. It's come off something. So this is probably my problem because this stuff right here is called magic smoke. And uh, when that magic smoke gets out of the circuit board, then it doesn't work. So that's why they call it magic smoke because it's what makes everything work. It's all that smoke right there. So something has happened to something in here and it is charted up. So now with that much smoke coming out, I ought to be able to see something on this board that got burnt. And let's just see if we can figure out what the problem is. All right, so let's take a close look at this board right here because with that much smoke, somebody's got to be burnt and maybe it's something easy. And so I can tell you right now, if I'm looking, it looks like these capacitors right here have blown out. Because as you can see, let me zoom down in there real close. And they carry a lot of weight, so it makes sense. It's kind of like a motor trying to start like one of my tools out in the shop. It has to have the capacitors to give it enough juice to kick over. And without these capacitors, it's probably not able to fire the inverters or the ballasts or whatever those things are called for an LCD TV. It's not able to fire them to get them to light up. But as you can see right here, this one is flat. This one's all pooched up. And that one is too. So I'll bet you all that smoke came out of those capacitors right there. And maybe it's just the capacitors have gone bad and it won't let the LCD ignite and get the inverters working so that it'll fire up. So maybe all we gotta do is change those capacitors out. I don't see anything else on the board that looks fried. And so I'm gonna give it a try because I think those capacitors don't cost very much. So we'll look them up based on their numbers and we'll see if we can get some capacitors and then we'll see if we can swap those little guys out. All right, so after a quick trip out on the web, we were able to find us some capacitors. So here they are right here. And these match up with the numbers. They're a 35 volt, 680 microfaraday capacitor. And something that I learned, because I always learn something, is that these things have polarity. So the little markings on the side tell you that this little guy is the negative. So I gotta be sure to match him up to the negative when I replace these out. So there we go. So for about eight bucks, got my capacitors. So now we can do a little bit of surgery on this board and see if we can get it fixed. So I'm gonna take this little sticky thing off right here and get him out of my way. Underneath there, I already peeled it up and nothing looks burnt on those. So I think we're in good shape. So now let's just see if we can take a capacitor off. So all we wanna do is raise him up because he's stuck down with some sticky glue, which I probably won't put back on there. So now everybody's freed up, and you can see it. I'll show it in the close-up there, but you can see it's all blowed out where that capacitor has seen better days. So I'm just gonna touch down on it and burn that solder. And there we go. So, as we can see, the end of that thing has gotten all big. And so now, what I gotta do is put the new one back on there, and it came off like this. I can tell because my sticky stuff's on the back. And so this one is the marked one. And so what I gotta do is take my new one, and I gotta put him in there with the marked one on that side. So I'm gonna cut these little leads off, and then we'll just stick him right back down. Do that three times and we'll be done. Like that. So now all we got to do is tin them. Now we just got to stick them back down. So we put them down like that and we stick them down. And there we go. He is stuck down. 
So there's one down. Now we just got to do these other two. And there we go. It always helps to pull up on them and just make sure that that solder held. Because on that one it didn't hold the first time. Alright, so we got our new capacitors on. And that's all that we saw wrong with the board. So now we can put it back together and see if we got some backlight. Alright, time to reassemble this thing in high speed. All right, so with the board back in and everything hooked up, let me turn the overhead light off so we can see when I fire it up, if those little areas right here, we can see that light light up. See if it's powered up and not making any noise. So let's get it plugged in again. And we'll fire it up and see if it lets out any magic smoke. Oh, quiet as a mouse now. Look, it's all lit up. And there's absolutely no noise coming out of the power supply. So I think that might have been the problem is that those capacitors were just blown out. And so what was happening is that they couldn't fire the inverter and so it was overloading the power supply, kind of like a motor out on a lathe or a mill or something like that without the starter capacitors, it'll just sit there and hum. So there we go. So now we can just reassemble this whole thing because it's quiet as a mouse now and the lights are nice and steady. So I'll get it all assembled, we'll flip it back over and we'll check it to see what it looks like. All right, so we're all back together, flip back over, so now let's plug the power in and see what the display looks like. We got it powered up, and turn around, still got my Vizio light visible. Now yeah, let's see what it do. Yeah, there we go. So no more flutter. So I think it must have been those capacitors. I'd say we're set back up. So we'll reinstall this thing on the wall, hook it back up, and we'll see what it looks like. Well, all right, we'll be back once we get it stuck back on the wall. All right, so TV's back mounted to the wall, and it looks good. No more flicker. So we're in good shape, and the sound and everything works good. So I think we got it. So, all we did was have to change out three of these little blown capacitors for 10 bucks for six, and I still got three left for the next time. Well, all right. Well, thanks for watching.